Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church service for December the 5th. Yes, we are in our Christmas season, and today we're actually going to be doing some Christmas songs. And so I'm looking forward to that. But before we do anything, we're going to open our time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful things that, Lord, are going to be presented today by your word. We ask your blessing, Lord, now upon the word of God. And also as well, Lord, the service that we're about to release in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the first song we're going to do is the first Noel. Find the right key here. The first Noel the angels did say was to set him for shepherds in fields as they lay. That's a great song to start off our time together. And uh, so the next one we're going to do, of course, is O Little Town of Bethlehem. And I like this song. So, O Little Town of Oh, 
Well, it's hard to believe that we're already in our Christmas season, but today we're going to look at some relationships, some godly relationships. But before we do anything, when it comes to the Word of God, let's pray. So, Father, we thank you today for the Word of God, and thank you, Lord, for what we're going to learn today from the Word of God. And now we ask, Lord, your blessing upon the Word of God, and that which is shared today, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, Paul writes in uh, uh, Philipp, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, he says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself as an offering to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of with water with the word and present himself a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blameless, holy and blameless. Uh, in this, the same way husbands are to love their wives as their own body, but he who loves his wife uh, does love himself. After all, no one hated his own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. Now, if we are the members of his body, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. History, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So today we're talking about proper relationships, and I'm addressing men, not just because I want to tackle or avoid the issue of women's liberation, but it's one of the biggest problems today in the world, because what we have is an improper view of what men really are. In this message today, we're going to look at what real relationships look between husband and wife and what they should look like. So in verse number 25, Paul says, men love your wives. The word love has four meanings. Men, you are to love your spouse, first of all, as a friend, as a, as your family, as a lover and spiritual head. Men are to be the high priests in their home and lead their families in the things of God. Men are to love their spouses unconditionally with no strings attached. Then Paul uses in verse 26, he says, as Christ loved the church. You see, Jesus has a complete love for his church. He looks at his church as a bride. Have you ever looked at your spouse as a perpetual bride? Have you ever uh, you you will never cheat or defile in this way. Also, you'll love her the same way that you loved her on the day that she walked down the aisle and knocked your socks off. Remember how you felt, how blessed you were knowing that this beautiful creature walking down the aisle had chosen you with all your faults, your failures, your habits and inconsistencies. She made a decision to love, honor, and cherish you till death do you part. Christ gave himself up for her. You see, Christ gave his life. Jesus said the greatest thing that you can do is lay down your life for a friend. Are you willing to do the same for your family? Well, many will say yes, but when the hard times come, when the stress, the obligations, responsibility, marriage become too much, a lot of people call it quits. Too many men do that today. You see, divorce is easy. Staying together is hard. The only cause for divorce in a Christian marriage is adult, idol, uh, adultery or the non-Christian partner saying, uh, we want to leave. Then the Bible says, let them go so that both you can live in peace. Christ made his church and bride two things. Number one, he made her holy. Men, you need to do the same. Your spouse is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you need to treat her such as that. Never defile, demand, or try to make her unholy by any means. It could be by you, what you say, imply, do or even think about here. The second thing is that he cleansed her with the washing of the word. That means as the spiritual head and high priest over your family, your time together in family devotions, private prayer, where you speak the word of blessing over her. You call her the bride of Christ. You call her a victor, an overcomer, and also a conqueror. Tell God how much you love her. This reminds you and her God and God 
why you loved her and respect her. Never say anything bad about your spouse in private or to other people. Uh, I should say in public to other people. You are washing her, protecting her, and blessing her no matter what. And Christ is proud of you as his church. He knows every fault. He knows every failure. He knows every sin you possess, but he still loves you. He sees you not as you are right now, but as you shall become. Do you ever see the potential and worth in your own spouse today? In verse number 27, Jesus sees us as the church, as radiant, without stain, wrinkle, or blemish. Men, is that how you see your spouse? She overlooks your obvious failures, your habits, faults, can you do the same for her? Because men are generally task oriented or non-emotional, we often overlook the opinions, the needs, the wants and desires of our spouse, or we just blow it off as a woman thing. Paul says we need to see her as blameless and holy. Remember, God is talking to a bunch of people who had just left paganism and idolatry and had no idea what a godly relationship was all about. This was a relationship guide for them. He's giving them a proper view of each other. Remember, most of the men at that time, had been, before their conversion, convorting around with prostitutes and being basically immoral. How a man treats his spouse also reflects on how he sees himself. Abusive people actually hate themselves and take it out on others. These qualities that you attack in others are actually things that you see lacking in yourself. Truth be told, when you hate others, you are actually hating yourself. Hurt bitterness and unforgiveness color everything you think, you say, and do. Paul makes an assumption here that everyone does not hate themselves. Instead, they care, feed, and nurture their bodies. So in the same way, Christ loves, cares, feeds, and nurses his church. Men are to do the same with their spouses. We are members of his body. Paul uses this analogy because as the body has many parts supporting and helping each other, so a man and wife and family do, unit does the same. The church is the ultimate model on how the home uh, uh model is, but the home is the macro or the mighty version, micro version of the, of the church. When the home is strong, the church is strong and vice versa. Then Paul closes this portion with an introduction to godly marriage, right from the pages of Genesis. He said this, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Now, the Ephesian male society was used to polygamy, bigamy, mistresses, slaves, and visiting temple prostitutes. So here Paul is saying, you need to be true to your wife. All other versions you see in our societies is not God's design. You are united to her for life. The two become one. This is God's man. Now, man's identity is the two become the together they become two. They are separate identities in God's uh, design. They are one identity. They complement and complete each other. Their strengths and weaknesses give them the whole unit. The two are better than one. Two standing together are stronger than one. They help each other in times of weakness. They hold each other up. They fight, protect, and work together. This is God's design for the family and marriage. And when some come and when some come someone comes to you and sells you or tries to tell you of another type of marriage, this is their design, not God's. Some people have told me, well Jesus never talked about, you know, marriage. Well Actually, he did. He did in Matthew chapter 19, verse number five. He said this very thing where he said, God said, a man will leave his father and mother and cling to his wife. So Jesus did talk about that. God's plan marriage is man and woman, not some other version as some people propone it today. Paul's day, it was even bad or even worse than it is today. Paul says this is a mystery of the Christ and his church. The church is a bride, a complement to Christ. Paul then uh, uh, closes again with emphasizing that a husband must love his wife as he does himself. Remember, 
Jesus said you are to love God with every fiber of your being. And when you get healed, this enables you to love others as you love yourself. Loving your spouse is actually loving God and loving others. The last exhortation is this. Wives, respect your husband. Remember, he is not perfect. He is flawed. He is faulty, fail -orient, failure-oriented, and very human. Respect him because he now knows how to treat his wife. The Ephesian men and men of today now have a crystal clear picture of how they're to treat and work with their spouses. But it is a work in process. It will probably be a process that will take a lifetime. It'll take patience, give and take, overlooking and working together. But a wonderful illustration that I want to close with today is the process of a diamond. You see, a diamond always starts off as a lump of coal. But over tremendous time and pressure, it becomes hard, clear, and of great value. And I want to remember, want you to know, so is your marriage and relationship with your spouse. Father, today we thank you for this wonderful exhortation given to the Ephesian church and to us today. Because Lord, our society is slipping so much as it was in the days of the church of Ephesus. We ask that Lord today that you would enable us, Lord, to be men and women of faith. Now, if we've not given our lives to Jesus Christ, then we, of course, are, if we're in a relationship, especially a marriage relationship, Lord, we don't have the third partner, and we need that third partner. I'm going to invite you to give your life to Jesus right now, and he can be a partner in your life, and if you are married, a partner in your relationship with your spouse. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you today for the eternal and abundant life that only you can bring. Right now, in this moment, I'm receiving you as my Lord and my Savior. And I'm asking you, Lord, today to help me to treat others as you have treated me with love and respect. I ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is the time where we also pray for your need. You may have a physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, or family need. It could be large or small. But I want to remind you two things today. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. That means that he'll supply every need according to his riches and glory. And number two, he is, of course, our healer, Jehovah Rophi. So right now, we'll start off with praying for your need and then praying for your healing. So Father, today we thank you for the fact that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. In this moment, Lord, you're going to supply every need according to your riches and glory. We're receiving that right now in Jesus' name as well, Lord. In this time and place of prayer, we're also asking that right now, you will heal us. You are the healer and 1 Peter 2.24 is the promise that we stand on today. By your stripes we're healed. So right now, Lord, whether we find ourselves at home or in hospital, no matter what we're dealing with today, and also as well, Lord, there are people in our life situation that need your touch. So Lord, would you bring healing to them as well? We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to sing to you one of my favorite songs. We Three Kings. We Three Kings of Orient of tiring gifts we travel the far fields and fountains moor and mountains following yonder star oh, oh star of wonder star of night star with royal beauty bright west 
Well, I want to invite you to our Sunday morning in-person service. We meet at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert, and we would love to have you join us. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. Let's close with prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you today for the word of God. And we thank you, Lord, for what we've learned today about relationships and also, Lord, how to treat one another. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon this service today. And also, Lord, throughout this day, we pray your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for spending time with me. Have yourself a good and godly day.